Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandua na Serre. Nem Bula vem cá, na Regengosa, na Bula FM, na Enacassi. Na Langosa, na Mandua Ativio, na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre, no Sur. Nem Bula vem cá, na Langosa, Jerry, e a Melambasa, a do Barrongo e na Bula FM. Bula FM, number two and Seri. In the news tonight, fourth witness takes stand in murder trial. Church falls victim to online scam. And no charges laid against Prime Minister. From the studios of FBC Subo, Jackie Spade. An investigation of police officers who allegedly assaulted 26-year-old local rugby player Chosu Lalovaki started three weeks after the incident on the 2nd of September 2018. The High Court today heard testimony from ASP Rusiate Ryland as the murder trial of two former officers, Kelepi Kolinisao and Selema Tiko Enamburavere, continued. It is alleged they caused the eventual death of Lalovaki by assaulting him at the Totongo police station in Suva on September September 2nd last year, Lalovaki died at CWM Hospital a month later. Pranit Prakash reports. Taking the stand, ISP Rusiate Ryland, who was the senior officer managing operations at the Totongo police station that morning, said he heard a commotion and went outside to see Tiko and Amburevere and a civilian exchanging punches. ISP Ryland said Colony Sau also joined in and kicked the civilian. Ryland said after the incident, Sergeant Pradeep Lal, also on duty, said no report of the alleged assault was lodged by the civilian. In cross-examination, ASP Ryland testified he was not aware that two days later, Lalavaki's brother had come to the police station to inquire about the report. In cross-examination, Sergeant Lal had said that he did not report what had conspired on 2nd of September as ISP Ryland had told him that he was dealing with the situation. ISP Ryland denied telling Sergeant Lal that he would deal with the matter, but admitted not instructing anyone to review the CCTV footage of the tape. He said they only keep the footage when a complaint comes in. He said it was three weeks later when he was called to the CID headquarters. He found out about the investigation into the allegation of assault. Pranita Prakash. FBC News. In a bizarre move, a church is under investigation for allegedly collecting money from its members to send to Nigeria in exchange for more cash. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission is investigating complaints lodged against the church. The commission says the church pastor allegedly had previously raised funds to build a complex five years ago, but nothing has been built to date. Kritika Kumar reports. This could be a case where the church has fallen victim to an online scam. 11,000 had already been collected and they were continuing to raise funds until they were going to reach 20,000 and then send it to this gentleman in Nigeria who then was going to uh, send a million dollars to Fiji which we, of course would never have happened because it was a scam. Joel Abraham says people normally do not question figures of authority especially in religious institutions. However people were giving because when a man of God stands up in the church and he asks people for money, nobody questions that because questioning a man of God is like questioning God. So generally, they, people do not ask for accountability and that is where the problem eventuates. Meanwhile, the Fiji Council of Churches is calling on church leaders to investigate and ask questions before indulging in online dealing. You know, it's a well-known thing around Fiji and other places that uh, you know, these people are not are very uh, honest about uh, what they do. So the scam uh, that, that came, you know, was in sort of oversight by the church leaders. Council of Churches President Reverend Dr. Tevita Bani Vanua says he has also received emails and complaints from people who say that they have received requests from overseas for financial assistance. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Director of Public Prosecutions Christopher Pride has decided that no charges will be laid against Prime Minister Vurengen Bainimarama. This is in relation to allegations that he assaulted National Federation Party member and MP Piyotikunduandua in the parliamentary precincts on 9th August this year. 
Pride says under Section 73 of the Constitution, Parliament has the power to discipline its members. The DPP stressed that as the altercation occurred within the precincts of Parliament, the Speaker exercised his authority and referred the matter to the Privileges Committee to hear evidence of the matter and to make findings on the allegation. Those findings were, accept were accepted by Parliament and implemented against both parties. Pride highlighted that accordingly, for these reasons, there will be no further action on this file and the matter is now closed and the police docket has been returned. The Tui Namosi and Sidelpa MP Ratu Suliano Matanitumboa has thanked the current government for its hard work in trying to take development to all Fijians. Speaking at the Namosi Provincial Council meeting today, Ratu Suliano says the current government has gone through a lot and deserves to be commended for its work. Ali Kimbia with the story. Not mincing his words, Ratu Suliano Matani Tumbua has given the applaud to government for their work of providing development to the people. I want to thank government for the work that you have done so far. Sometimes there is hardship and at times you are faced with criticism, but you guys stand firm and continue to deliver for the people. Ratu Suliano also spoke highly of civil servants in the Namosi Provincial Council for their service to the Manua. Minister for Infrastructure Tono Samati says for someone like Ratu Suliano to make this kind of comments, it will boost the morale of civil servants. As a member of government, we are very appreciative. On the Honorable Ratu Suliano Matantambo is a former government minister. He knows the, the issues that are related to this, so we appreciate the, the comments that were made. Ratu Suliano Matani Tambu has also called on all the villages in the province of Namosi to work with the current government as they try to take development to all the rural communities in Fiji. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. A stern reminder was today issued to 186 RFMF personnel who will soon leave for their United Nations assistance mission in Iraq. Speaking to the troops at the Black Rock camp in Nandi, Minister for Defense and National Security in Ratu reminded the troops to uphold the legacy of peacekeeping that Fiji is known for. Philippe Nancaso reports. The message was clear from the top and that was to ensure that officers stick to their mission during their tour of duty to the Middle East. So the challenge that you and I equally face today is how we can maintain that legacy, maintain that higher reputation, maintaining that higher level of professionalism and conduct. It is a challenge. So when you go and serve in Iraq, make sure that you also not only fulfill the mandate but be aware of the fact that you are there as ambassadors of this country. These personnel have also been reminded to make the right decisions and not to forget about their families. You must have plans about your family when you come back from peacekeeping operations. We've had incidences in the past where people retire from the RFMF, they don't even have even a house, a home for their family. That's disappointing. The troops have also undergone an intense and grueling six weeks of training to prepare themselves for what Baghdad has to offer. It's uh, not necessarily peacekeeping duties. It, it is mainly they are there to guard uh, the UN staff. They are currently being, uh, doing duties all over Iraq. The humanitarian staff, the political staff. So the Fijian soldiers that are deployed there are mainly there to look after this uh, UN personnel. The first set of troops will leave next week, while the rest will depart in January for a one-year tour. Philippe and I, Caso, FBC News. Up ahead, traders under the spotlight. And first ever rural tsunami drill a success. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. 
Consumer Council is heightening its Diwali surveillance as they expect a rise in unscrupulous trading during this busy period. The council, through market surveillance, has found several traders selling fireworks at misleading prices. Kritika Kumar reports that in some cases, the in-house advertised prices did not match the point-of-sale system price. The consumer watchdog believes that fireworks are already quite expensive for most consumers. And to top it off, some traders are duping them by charging extra. Retailers who are involved in selling the firecrackers were selling uh, the crackers at different prices. When I'm saying different prices is that the price at the, on the shelves were different from the price at the checkout. The council is warning these unscrupulous traders to refrain from such unethical behavior. What is more concerning or worrying for us is that this will be the last weekend where people or families will flock out in numbers to buy firecrackers. And maybe in a rush they will not check the prices. They get enticed when they look at the prices on the shelf which is very low. And once they go and check out, if they do not check their receipts, they might end up paying a higher price for the, the firecrackers. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission is also calling on the public to be vigilant. When you're buying firecrackers, that these are not, uh, they haven't been there for uh, some time. Uh, they're not damp, you know, they're good for use. And please retain your receipts where, when you're buying things. Meanwhile, another concern for the Consumer Council is traders selling fireworks labeled in foreign language without any English translation. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. As part of National Disaster Awareness Week, tsunami drills have been held in several Tavuni villages. The National Disaster Management Office hopes this will enhance disaster preparedness in all communities and reduce damage and losses when disaster strikes. Lena Rees reports. Fijians in Lavena Tavayuni successfully carried out a tsunami drill yesterday, which saw the participation of almost 350 villages. This was the first ever drill undertaken in a rural community. The training and exercise conducted today, I know, will enable our families here in Lavena be better prepared for natural disasters should they occur. A tsunami drill was also held in Somosomo today and other neighboring villages. The exercise was held a success as people made it to their safe zones well ahead of the estimated time. We found the feedback has been great. It's been it's brought to the forefront of the communities just how vulnerable they are to tsunamis and how they appreciate the fact of having a tsunami, a community uh, evacuation plan, a community disaster plan and just uh, just brings to the, the, the forefront just how, how, how vulnerable they are and that they should be prepared should an event uh, such as a tsunami occur in the community. Meanwhile, Fiji is ranked the 10th highest disaster-prone country in the world, and tropical cyclone Winston serves as an example of the risks we face. Lena Rees, FBC News. Corrections officers play a crucial role in shaping the lives of inmates. Those were the words of Permanent Secretary for Itau K Affairs, Meleti Mbaini Marama, while officiating National Corrections Day at the Namboro Corrections Complex today. Chisai Nanunga reports. Baini Marama urged the corrections officers to continue showing good examples to inmates in every corrections facility across the country. Times have changed regarding the operations of correction officers in every correction facility. You are role models to inmates and it is important to continue strengthen your moral support for them. These inmates comes from different backgrounds and communities, therefore your understanding will be a key element to deal with them. Deputy Commissioner of Corrections, Apmeliki Tauke, says this annual event started three years ago to acknowledge the services of correction officers. Sometimes, you know, for us to uh, acknowledge the hard work that's been done by, by corrections officers. So that's uh, when uh, the idea was conceived, and we have all agreed to that. And we started off uh, three years ago. This is the third uh, occasion that we have uh, when we're enjoying the, uh, the festivities. Corrections officers are instrumental in the daily operations of the FCS, hence the National Corrections Day, which has been earmarked as an annual event aims to recognize their efforts and contributions. Jose Nanunga, FBC News. 
The Joker's Dance Group is one of nine groups who will be performing at this year's Mirchi FM Radio Fiji 2 Disco Dandia and Garba Night. Group director Sonal Govin says they have been rehearsing for a month for the competition. Govin adds the group has been performing at various functions and are confident of performing well. The event will be hosted at Demoda City from 6 p.m. and at 10 p.m. this Saturday. And the songs we have chosen is basically some uh, uh, latest uh, trending songs uh, for Garba and also we have uh, taken out some uh, old songs for Garba and we have mixed it together and we have prepared a routine uh, and we hope that uh, all of you actually will love our routine. With the rock market set for this Sunday, the organizing committee plans to use it as a platform to raise awareness for breast cancer. Event coordinator Lana Kaloni Singer says staff from the Fiji Cancer Society will be present at the monthly event to raise funds for those battling the disease. Kaloni Singer is urging Fijians to come forward and donate whatever they can for a worthy cause. The society will also be selling pink ribbons at the Rock on Sunday. We encourage everybody to come down to the market. Not only are you uh, supporting small local home-based business, but this month you're also supporting the Fiji Cancer Society and their their fight to raise funds for this dreadful disease. Um, the rock market ladies have talked and we encourage everybody to self-check regularly. And tonight, Karoy joins us with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up after the break, low tuna supply for PAFCO. And in growing Fiji, Sir Brails opened their teeth outlet. Stay with us. I'm Shamiza and I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Mirchi FM because it's hot. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. And we listen to Mirchi FM sunta hai because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Dago Mama. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The problem of not being able to supply enough tuna to the Pacific Fishing Company is expected to worsen. This year has been challenging as PAFCO has also seen more competition in the industry. Apenisa Wanga Rondova reports that some suppliers have now opted for other buyers who export the fish overseas for processing. The Standing Committee on Public Accounts today received worrying reports that tuna supplies have been low for PAFCO throughout 2019. We have been faced with uh, various challenges of uh, supply issues mostly. The Albaco supply has been quite low this year. The supply in the region has not only gone down, but there are new markets for suppliers. There are uh, price issues as well. There is a lot of competition for tuna as well. We know that there are uh, other companies buying tuna in, in Fiji as well. So tuna is uh, landed in Suva, but it's not processed here. It's exported and processed in, uh, in other factories around the region. Pafco has also revealed that Bumblebee Foods, which sometimes supplies fish to them, has taken a step back. When we have issues of low supply, we, we go back to the regions. And the reasons we get is that the catch is low. At times, Bumblebee does uh, buy tuna from uh, other regions and supply to us, but it has not been the case this year. The standing committee rallied its support behind Pafco in the hope that it will soon recover its supplies. public is really trying to you know, enjoy uh, your product and I think it is well consumed so continuity of that will be really uh, important not only for our country but also for our market outside Fiji. Pafco is now only able to process around 70 metric tons daily which is compromise of both Albaco and skipjack tuna compared to 120 metric tons needed daily to efficiently run operations. Apeniso Wangardobu, FBC News. And now with a look at the world's money markets, here's Gary Brown from HFC Bank. U.S. retail sales fell for the first time in seven months in September. This raised fears that a slowdown in the American manufacturing sector could bleed into the consumer side of the economy. The U.S. Commerce Department said Wednesday that retail sales dropped 0.3% last month as households slashed spending on building materials, online purchases, and especially cars. The decline was the first since February. Closer to home, 
Australian employment boasted another solid gain in September, while the jobless rate dipped for the first time in seven months, as fewer people went looking for work. This is taken as a tentative hint of a much-needed tightening in the labour market. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Pinaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar was strong in a turbulent global money market. The Sangamoli rose against most of the currencies of our major trading partners, with the exception of the safe haven Japanese yen and the euro. Looking at the commodities market, oil prices continue their slow descent at just under $53 per barrel, and gold went off the rise, hitting $1,490 per ounce and silver closed down at 17.38 per ounce. In growing Fiji tonight, furniture maker and retailer Subrails opened another branch at Nokonoko Road outside Suva today. The new half-million-dollar store employs about 20 locals and will soon be powered by solar energy, Sanyan Mboila reports. Moving towards solar energy is one of Subrail's major focus. So we are looking at uh, solar panels for this particular location to offset our carbon emissions. We're looking into that and we are hopeful to have that implemented in the next six months. So we are also looking at our manufacturing division as well um, to offset our, um, our power usage. In, in that division as well. Branch manager Vimles Cherry says Subrails is moving away from the busy city for the convenience of its customers. Why we chose Nokonoko Road because it's a bit uh, far from the busy city and uh, so the traffic movement is very good here and the customers flow is good. We have monitored it and so we have decided uh, to move in here and uh, to get uh, access to the customers who are around here who is not uh, always going to town in the busy traffic and plus the parking area. Subrails has plans in place to expand in the northern division. It currently has 13 branches nationwide. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. That's it for business tonight. Sport is up next with Jamie. Thanks, Korea, and good evening ahead in sports. Bunivalu ruled out for Fiji Mbati. An underdog tag for NRC champions. This and more after the break. Nathango Merea, Maramani Waya Manatuya Sawa, Waiti Kitukutunde Nandi, Ya Undo Marataka Navarroga na Radio Fijuan. Ya wa Asna Vatili, Ya wa Maga Monika. Tondo Varrongo Vale, Buna Domo Ibiti Lambasa. Bula, Nathango Aprosa Nangarse, Radio Fiji One, Fiji Mbati and Melbourne Storm flyer Sulia Sivunivalu has been ruled out of this weekend's Rugby League World Cup Nines in Australia. Bunivalu was recently attacked in Bali, Indonesia, while on an end-of-season trip with his Storm teammates, Tosai Doka, Nelson Asofa Solomona, Tui Kamikami, and a few others. But it's a hamstring injury, not the gas he sustained under the eye after being coward punched, which, was ruled, which has ruled Bunivalu out of the ninth tournament. It's the same injury which kept Bunivalu from playing in Melbourne's preliminary finals loss to the Roosters, but he is still expected to join his Fijian teammates in Parramatta this week. Fiji National Rugby League acting CEO Don Natambe says it's unfortunate that Wunivalu will not run out for the Mbati. However, they do have a contingency plan in place. We announced an 18-man team, uh, sorry, a 16-man team for, for the uh, World Cup of Nine. And uh, that included one uh, spare player that we could use if anyone had, would get injured. So we, we had that sort of before the incident uh, with uh, the Melbourne Storm was in Bali happened there. Yeah? Um, so we're pretty much on the get-go already, uh, even with Julia out. I know with uh, the other party players in it, um, they'll put on a good show uh, tomorrow. Remember, you can watch all games from the Rugby League World Cup Nines live on the FPC Sports Channel this weekend. 
The defending champion status means nothing to the Fiji Airways and Rua preparing for their semi-final clash against the Canberra Vikings in the Australian National Rugby Championship. The side held their final training run today in Nandi before they depart for Canberra tomorrow morning. Coach Sini Rusi Serwakula says they are expecting a tough clash against the Vikings. He adds the team has moved on from their narrow win last week in Lawanga Park and have also worked on a number of issues from that game. At this point, we, we are not rating ourselves as, uh, as champion. It's, it's, uh, we were champion last year, so this year is a different uh, uh, competition again for us. And, uh, and it's going to be a tough uh, semi-final. Uh, as I said from the start, it, 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 this is a development year for the draw. And I'm very proud of the boys uh, that we managed to be on the top four. Uh, we were on third uh, on, the, on the ladder. And uh, it's going to be hard this week playing against uh, the Rambis, the Super Rugby team. And uh, they will be fighting hard uh, at their home ground. The Fijian Rua take on the Vikings this Saturday at 4 p.m. There's been a lot of talk about Ireland winning two of the last three matches against the All Blacks ahead of their Rugby World Cup quarterfinal clash this weekend. And while those games were decided by the team that showed up with more energy and passion, coaching strategy and tactics have been an interesting part of this rivalry. In another quarterfinal clash this weekend, France take on the Welsh. And as Wales prepare for that knockout match, they've made it clear what's driving them over the next few days. Boxing Commissioner Fiji Chairman Dr. Subha Sapana appointed last month is out to bring back some order in the sport. Dr. Apana takes over from former chairman Bulutani Matai Tawakilai and is vowed to take professional boxing in Fiji to greater heights. Sabe Wanga with this report. Boxing in Fiji has lost its glare amongst Fiji's sports fans, and BCF's new chairman, Dr. Apna, says he can change this. We need to make decisions that everybody can understand. Um, you know, we, for example, if somebody is going to fight overseas, we want to make sure that the weights of the two boxes match. We want to make sure that their records match, that we don't have any, any um, mismatches. He says the commission had a lot of problems which the new BCF executives will try to solve. At some stage, the, the, the BCF became um, non-functional, okay? Non-functional in the sense that they are the, the Act, 2008 uh, BCF Act, clearly states what is to be done and what is expected. But I'm told by, uh, in one of the correspondences from the previous president, that there were only two of them running the show at one stage. Only two of them. Now you cannot have that because there is a clear stipulation in the law that says you should have a, a board, four members and a chairman. The new chairman says that rules are clear on what is to be done and what is expected from the commission. Meanwhile, Nathan Singh will make his professional debut against Ritesh Gaunda in the bantamweight division in the upcoming South Pacific boxing promotion. I'm expecting war. I'm expecting war. Um, whether the fight's going to be a knockout or a decision, I'm leaving that arena victorious. There will be a total of nine bouts in the program. The main bout will see Savannah Van Oliva from Bar taking on Joseph Quadjo, and the pair will be fighting for the vacant light heavyweight title at Prince Charles Park in Nandi next Saturday. Save Wanga, FBC Sports. Severis has been named in the All Blacks team to play Ireland. The All Blacks coaching staff have gone with a tested lineup, and Reese and George Bridge maintain their place on the wings. Brody Retallick is also back at lock after having missed most of the World Cup due to injury. Meanwhile, England has not included Joe Dokana Singh and its team to play Australia. Coach Eddie Jones has also named Marco Vunipola, who replaces Joe Mala at loose head prop in his first England start since February. Fiji can expect a new netball coach soon with Vicky Wilson no longer in the national setup. Wilson's contract expired in July straight after the Netball World Cup. The former Australian captain had been coaching the Pearl since 2016, guiding them through the 2017 Pacific Mini Games, the Commonwealth Games in 2018, as well as the Netball World Cup earlier this year. ABC Sports has sent questions to Netball Fiji President Wainiki Timbongin Rao, and the response as to when a new coach will be appointed is expected soon. The New Zealand Silver Ferns have relinquished their lead in the Constellation Cup as the Australian Diamonds leveled the series one all last night. The 48-42 loss sees New Zealand miss out on a third straight win over Australia on a night that could be goodbye for one Kiwi veteran. That's it from sports tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and then weird and wonderful later on reasons why you shouldn't wear a suit to a job interview. Details coming up.
देता है हमारे नाम उमेश कुमार हम देता है रेलेबू और रेडियो फ्रीजियम हर दम सुनता है बहुत पुराना पुराना गाना लगे और बहुत रोते सुनता है बहुत अच्छा लगे हमके उमेश चंद्रा और कांता चंद्रा हमारे वाइफ है हम लोग रेडियो फ्रीजी तू बहुत सुंदर से सुनता है बहुत अच्छा प्रोग्राम नंबर वन रेडियो हमारे सामने नायक है गोम वाले बुल लटाव का रेडियो फ्रीजी तू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे कुमार नकाफी में रहता है रेडियो फ्रीजी तू सुनता है रेडियो फ्रीजी तू देश की धड़कन Hello there and welcome to Weather World. The country is all soaked up in rain due to a trough of low pressure. But hey, smile, at least it's not a Monday. And a little secret, Thursday doesn't even count as a day. It's just a thing that's blocking Friday. Now a look in the west, Reiki Reiki had some solid downpour earlier today. Eastwards from Pak Haba to Suva, showers, showers and more showers expected tonight. And up north, a wet day for many. There is little chance of sunshine though. At sea, easterly winds 25 to 30 knots with rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 8.44 p.m. with high tide at 3.08 a.m. Sunrise will be at 5.35. For tomorrow, Friday, there you are. We've been looking for you since Monday. Unfortunately, we will have a wet Friday. Tomorrow's temps, since the weather is cold and rainy, it will mostly range in the low 30s for all the centers. So if you're going out shopping, carry your umbrellas. And looking further on to Saturday, it will be the final weekend to shop before Diwali. So step out with warm wear and closed shoes. And that's all the weather from the weather world. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. Tonight in Fiji Impulse, we ask, what do you think about the prices of fireworks? Last year was a little bit cheaper. This is uh, more expensive. This year is uh, good, better than last year. Uh, expensive, eh? Last year good. This year is cheap and last year is cheapest. Recapping the main stories for tonight, fourth witness takes down a murder trial, church falls victim to online scam and no charges laid against Prime Minister. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. Our poll question, we're asking, should all public service vehicles undergo a thorough test monthly? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, we go all the way to Korotongo in Singatoka. This was taken by Sagar, showing the beautiful palms swaying in the breeze with the cool breeze, greeting all those who visit the area. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News, our Twitter page at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I stay safe, stay warm and dry. Good night. Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bulu Minaka, I'm Linda Form. I started at Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Akereta from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love for Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.